G'day, how are you? Um, Tame here again, and what I want to speak to specifically are the guys in the house, and particularly those who are looking for a level up. I'll give you a scenario. It's the new year, and you've you've come to realise the you know the the air of infatuation and enthusiasm that comes with Christmas and the new year it's worn off. It's back to work. If you've got children, the children are getting ready to go back to school, and you've you know gone back into your routine, you know your day to day, and potentially over that Christmas and New Year period, you might have put on a couple of kilos, spent a bit too much money, drank a bit too much, ate a bit too much food, you know things of that nature, and the you know the days, weeks, or months that went, you know from the start of the holiday period up until about now. Um, that time has, has been used um, for, you know, for a great cause, which is spending time with your family, having fun, all the rest of it, letting your hair down. But there might be a little bit of buyer's remorse, so to speak, because there were still things that you wanted to achieve and in the back of your head um, through that Christmas period, but now you've self-sabotaged. You've actually gone against the grain, not used your resources wisely, potentially, and now you feel like you're starting from scratch. You're starting all over again. And I, for one, have done that many a year, and there's nothing wrong with that per se. But if you're also having that buyer's remorse um, feeling, let it be known that that's a good thing because you've got self-awareness around what you haven't done, and it's still a priority in your heart and mind to get it done. So, guys, if you are feeling this way, perfect because it's now an opportunity to grow, to move yourself up into the next level of your life, to do the things that you want and to do them really well. It is very much about starting at point A and point A is your current situation. So all of the aspects of your life, your relationship situation, your financial situation, your family situation, if you've got children, if you've separated and you've got children, you know, how are you doing with your co-parenting situation? Your internal emotional climate, how's that going? You're feeling happy, sad, angry, depressed, anxious, joy, you know, all different, th all different things. How are you with your workplace? Do you, f do you feel like you're fitting in? Do you feel like that's where you belong? Are you earning the right money? You know, do you feel like you're earning the money that you think you're worth? Are you doing the kind of work that sets your, your life on fire that you really feel passionate about or you're just there to get the bills paid? You know, by doing this quick self-assessment and continuing to reassess, even on a small level on a daily basis, but on a, on a larger level, maybe like a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis, you'll actually become very aware of how you're acting within your life. And this simple practice is instrumental in getting started. So that's point A. Point A is your starting point. Wherever it is that you are in life, what I'd like to allude to you whilst you're going through this process is to avoid shaming or guilting yourself into having not done the things that you, you would like to have done or said that you were going to do. Just understand that you're here and now and there's nothing we can do about that except to bring a space of gratitude around or bring that into a space of gratitude and to understand that we have dreams, passions, desires and we can fulfill them. Not all of them necessarily will be fulfilled but just because you're a guy, you might be the alpha, you might be the provider, doesn't mean that you're superman or you're superhuman. You just have to be yourself. And to find who you are and to be that person can be a lifelong journey. And I for one can tell you that I used to th think I was a certain person, did certain things, lived a certain way, and then I woke up. And that completely changed the course of my life. And as a result, and now I have much more confidence, but not in a bravado sense, much more humble sense, because I don't need to tell people how good I am or how good I feel or any of that. They, they can tell because of just how I do what I do. And I'm nice about others being who they are, non-judgmental, that kind of stuff. But that's, the, that's, your, own, that's your own journey that you'll, have, that you'll have to make. But if you can refrain from judging yourself, or condescending to yourself whilst you make these assessments and I call them assessments because you're just taking a view from a coach's perspective at what you're doing how you're being and the results that you're getting as, as you know as part of that process and then you want to put it on paper so you want to think about this get away from the judgment take an assessment a poll of how things are going what is it that's going on in your life and you want to get it down on paper forget about 
your conditioning as much as you can because there's, there's roadblocks, there's fears, there's doubts, there's all kinds of things that we've grown up with, either from our parents, the other children in our family, other kids that we played with, the schooling system, all different influences that'll teach us things that are supposedly right and wrong. But I can tell you that people do not share the same opinion about the same thing. I'll give you an example. In Europe, they drive on the right-hand side of the road. Australia, drive on the left. Who's got the correct way? And the reason I say it like that is because life is really a journey that you drive through, that you ride through, that you walk through, that you traverse. And the way it means that you do it can have a profound effect on its impact for yourself. You can have a great life if you just change the way that you think about how you've got to get to where you want to go. Be open to the influences that are going to help you and get rid of the ones that are not. So that point A is that self-assessment where you just take a good look at yourself real quick. You don't need to justify why things are the way that they are. You just need to know that they are as they are. Then you need to work out which ones are working for you and which ones are not. And by doing that, you'll know what to stop doing. And you'll know what to keep doing. Now, the, the simple fact of the matter is, is that if you're listening to this, you really do want to know what does it take to get you to where you want to be. So I cannot reiterate this enough. It's not just about setting a goal and putting a plan of action into place. It's about understanding where you are now. Because your course of action may not be right for your goal. And it might be adding more workload to your existing busy life. But in actual fact, you don't need to be adding extra workload. You need to be removing some workload from certain areas as well. This is one example. For me, doing more will give you more. But doing the right stuff and more of it will really, really give you that, that edge compared to what you did yesterday. Furthermore, it's not a competition between you and the other guys or the other men around, or women around you. It's about competition between you, your old self and your, your new self. You versus you. Does that make sense? Okay, so point A, where are we? Our start position, our self-assessment. Get that down. How's our physical shape? We're drinking too much, we're eating too much, we're not sleeping enough, we're not drinking enough water, we're eating the wrong kinds of foods, hanging out with the wrong kinds of people, staying up late, not being productive in our side hustle, don't have a side hustle. Any of these things tick, tick a box. All of those need to stop. If you're serious, if you're deadly serious, if you don't exercise enough, you just give yourself a mark off whether or not you're fulfilling your health goals or your health needs. They're really requirements for, for performing at a decent level. But performing at a high level, they need focus. They need structure. They need tenacity. And you need to be willing to adapt to changes on the fly so that you can still meet your goals every day. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been tracking certain metrics. I've been tracking my body, I've been tracking my training, I've been tracking my mindfulness and reading and self-reiki and walking exercise. And I realized that the first week I'd done quite a lot of things every day. The second week, it kind of dropped a bit, working a little bit more, doing more training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu than I was walking. I decided yesterday at the recap, after the recap, I decided that each of these things needed to be done every single day. The reason for that is because if I am to hone a craft which requires sound mind, body and soul to have an effective and efficient thought process with clarity, succinct communication skills and being able to help others to do so themselves, then I need to really tweak all of those systems. And for me, the system I've created has taken years to come up with. Reiki is quite new to me. It's not, I haven't even been in the Reiki world for about a year. And I can tell you, I probably wasn't ready for it before because my meditation practice wasn't that great. So I wasn't able to be aware of how I felt or how I was even being impacted from things like Reiki. But yet I'm quite an emotional and empathic type person. Bringing up your practice, your daily practice, every single day, morning, evening, and in between, 
is the way for you to create better habits and those habits turn into daily rituals and turn into weekly milestones which turn into monthly goals etc etc so it's a long game that we're playing 36 years of age I think I've got some time to make a really strong impact on my health wealth fitness you know all the rest of it right that's what I advise you guys to do now is to do your self-assessment and to decide to use the rest of your time whether it's a little bit or a lot to transform it in some way shape or form to give you that fulfillment that you've always been searching for and if you're cool where you're at, that's cool too. And I hope that we just connect on, on, a, on a really beautiful human level and that, that we can interact with each other, you know, through the medium of social media or however. Okay, so point A, you've got your self-assessment. Number two, you're deciding what you've got to drop. Number three, you've got to decide what you're going to keep. Don't be attached to this. Be very neutral about this. And the reason is, is because you don't want to spend time work, trying to work out if it's going to be valuable or not. You gotta understand that if you've got a goal, and that goal directly relates to something that you're gonna see in your life. I'll give you an example. If you have small children, and you're obese, and you can't keep up with them around the, around the house or around the yard, you need to lose 40 to 50 kilos. Stop doing whatever it is that's keeping you obese. Start doing whatever it is that will stop you from being obese. That means exercise, that means diet, that means sleep, that means stop the alcohol, stop the drugs whatever it is, right? It's a very non-neutral, non-judgmental way of thinking is the one that I want you to implement where you don't guilt or shame yourself for the things that you've done. You just understand that it's a reality and you want to change that reality. Yes, it is easier for me to say this than it is to do. And I can tell you that I too have gone through my own journey of guilt and shame. It just It doesn't serve. So you want to get into the frame of doing that decisive process as often as you can. So you do it with small things. Okay, I'm going to get up five minutes earlier than normal. And you just keep doing that one thing. And then you add to that, okay, I'm going to write how I feel for five minutes per day. And you'll, you'll get that on a piece of paper every single day. You'll understand, you'll get to know yourself from a different perspective. That much is true. Okay, I'm going to go for a little walk. Five to ten minutes to start off with every single day. Or a kilometer if you want to go for, you know, break it down to distance or time. Or a specific circuit. Give yourself these little changes every single day. I mean, I've been doing this for years. So, and I can fluctuate, my body weight can fluctuate, my mood can fluctuate very rapidly because that's how, how I've been for a number of years. But what I'm interested in now is sustaining that for a really long period of time. 36, let's just say I live to about 80, so that's 44 years. I wanna be in that optimal zone of productivity as much as I can so that I can have a really fulfilling life, I can have a really happy life, I can give all the knowledge that I've attained thus far and all the knowledge I will attain in the future to my children, to have them live in a way which is truly out of control in, in certain sense. Because there's just things about life that I don't agree with. And giving the power to the individual, we can break through the confines. I don't believe that living necessarily in the 40, 40, 40, type paradigm is the one for everyone. It might have worked for my parents. You know, you work for 40 years, 40 hours a week. <laughs> but I don't know what the other 40 is to be honest, but, and, or, and then you get 40% of your income to retire on. That, that, that's not good enough for me because through the power of the internet, I've seen how beautiful the world is and it's gonna cost a hell of a lot more than the money that can come from these kinds of jobs to go and see it all to go and have these experiences, right? And so, whilst I'm 36, people might say, oh, you're almost up past halfway over the hill, so to speak. I'm like, I'm just getting started. Life is long. My kids are here. They deserve for me to put in the effort and they deserve to be able to understand how far they could go. They start today as well, right? In their own way, in their own way. Not like us, you know, bigger people. So with that in mind, Stay away from the old world conditioning as best as you can. If you get caught up in the old world conditioning, change the way you speak to yourself. You might be like negatively talking. You might be thinking, oh, I'm just a big fat slob, I'm dumb, I'm slow, I can't learn. You need to give yourself a quick metaphorical uppercut and go stop. And you, go, you know what? I am slow right now. But that's because I haven't been putting in the effort, I haven't been putting in the training, I haven't been putting in the work. I am 
able to put in the work, put in the training. Self-talk, according to many of the psychologists that I've either talked to or heard speak, agree, is one of the most influential forces into achievement. And I cannot stress how helpful that has been in the immediate future. If you take the sports psychology and performance psychology information that you can see on YouTube for free and you apply it in your life today, you're going to feel a hell of a lot better about overcoming some challenges. I'll tell you why. And this is something that um, Renan Bouchard talks about in his book, High Performance Habits, and it's because of clarity. And clarity refers to knowing what you want and knowing how to get it. And by writing what you want down and then devising a process of how to get it, you actually can get that. And you've got to understand that whatever it is that you want, it's quite likely that other people have thought about it as well. I'm not saying that, you, you, know, you know, by being unoriginal, uh, there's no merit in it. In fact, everything that I want, other people want as well, have wanted and have, have attained as well. So I'm going to leverage the information that other people have stro stri well, striven, 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 I don't know, have strived <laughs> to learn for the benefit of me. I'm going to show respect to the people who have done this time and time again, and I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to be their student so that I too can level up my life, whatever it is. And for you to get clarity, at least for a moment on something, then to, even if to realize that that's actually not what you want, but that asking for clarity, the getting of it, and then the actioning to get what it is that you think you want is a really powerful process. So if you, you wake up every day and you ask yourself, what is it that I want? And the original thing that you might come up with might be around how you feel. And you might be like, I want to feel energetic. So you go, okay, well, how do I feel energetic? I don't know. Okay, so a quick Google search. How to get more energy. A lot of common responses you'll find will be to move your body. And you go, shit, I really hate exercise. I'll tell you why you hate exercise. Because you suck at it. If you were good at it and you got some feedback that, you know, maybe someone else had noticed your hard work and that you'd gone somewhere, which is an external gratification process, mind you, and I don't recommend you seek them out actively, but that, that might be a little bit of encouragement that shows you that you are capable. So see that in your head before you've even started. So how would you feel if you actually made some progress? Just visualize it. This is another thing, like there's a video I saw of LeBron James sitting on the sideline and if you don't know LeBron James, he's a mega superstar in basketball. And he's like meditating and visualizing. It's called mental rehearsal. And that's what the top performers in many different industries do. They rehearse what they're going to do ahead of the time. So they get to see the mental result and train their brain to understand how it feels to actually achieve the things that they're doing. And as a result, the brain stores that information. And then when he goes to do whatever it is that he's doing, a shot, getting past someone, taking the ball off someone else, he actually can do that as if he's already done it so many more times because of that mental rehearsal. This is scientifically proven, it's not new, it's actually has a reasonable age on it, and I recommend you do it. Visualization is what the New Age movement might refer to it as, and if you're not visualizing or mental rehearsing, you're really not giving yourself the best chance. That doesn't mean you're gonna become a genius because you visualize one time you walking around the block or a fitness freak, you're actually going to have to do this a lot of times. It's like any skill. It takes time and perseverance to develop. And when you add in doing the actual exercise, along with your mental rehearsal and your constant action for the things that support it. So if you want to lose, if you want to have more energy and you eat better food, you get better sleep, you drink more water and better water, and you have more meaningful connections with people, of course, that energy is going to go up. People who have what seems like natural abundance of energy, they're doing these things. They might naturally be more you know, aligned with that practice, but at the same token, they're also doing the things that keeps them having more energy. It's very simple. You check yourself out. How do I feel? Do I feel energetic or do I feel dead? Okay, if I feel dead, you know, these are the two poles, the two opposites. If I feel dead, what am I gonna to do to get myself out of this dead zone? Believe me, that's a tough question to ask yourself because more often than not, you just probably want to sit on the couch, watch a movie, eat some chocolate, eat some ice cream, you know, feel sorry for yourself, whatever. But what's our goal? Our goal is to have more energy. Okay, so let's find that out. Let's get the things, the nutrients, the uh, practices, the exercise into our lives 
that gets us our goal. What's another goal? Okay, I want to earn more money. Okay, well, how much money do we earn right now? Write that down. How much money do we want to earn in the future? Okay, write that down. Okay, well, what skills do we have? What uh, knowledge do we have? Who do we know? How can we up level up our, our income? You might be thinking, oh, well, I can't level up my income because I never went to, you know, I never finished high school. I never got a diploma or I never finished university. I tell you, I searched over the weekend for performance psychology. You can learn, a, you can do a psychology degree online. Now, I haven't had to do this for over 10 years, study at university. But I can tell you, the ways and means that we had to learn back in those days was face-to-face. -face. That was the only way to do it. And so technology is allowing us to, to go beyond the bounds of yesterday. So if you're like me and you're approaching the middle of, of your life, the, the way that things were done before are not being done like that anymore. They're, they're being more vers made more versatile because they, they want you in their business. They want you to, to have the knowledge that, that they've got to pass it on and to, to create that legacy. That's what education is all about. Education is power, man. Nelson Mandela, he knew that. He's, everyone who has been in a position of power has got there through education and using that information for their benefit and the benefit of those around them. And that is something that I just love. I relish it, okay? So you don't think you have the you know, the qualifications to earn more money, think again. There's other ways and means. Type it in, how can I make more money? Now, for, for example, see what you come up with. Follow a few rabbit holes. Talk to some people. You, you might actually be exceptional at selling products. You start yourself a little online business, which over the next three to five years gives you the same income as you're working on your full-time job. Doubled your income, you know. Mind you, that's a, a lot of work. If you've got to do a full-time job plus selling products online, that's it's a hell of a lot of work. But if you're doing things like high-performance habits, you know, you're self-assessing, you're taking care of your diet, your exercise, your mental game, your spiritual game, your heart game, you know, you're treating yourself lovely, you're being loving to yourself, you've got the self-care game down pat, you're gonna be able to perform better. So what used to take you, you know, your 40 hours, you might get done in 20. And I'm not saying like that just as an analogy, that's literally how much more optimal your performance could be by doing the right things and doing them over and over and over again. So gentlemen, I'm still speaking to you because I understand that you're the most stubborn of the races or stubborn of the genders. And I want to speak to you on men on Monday with men or men, I don't know, I'll give it a name later, but it's Mad Men Mondays. That's what that's what the name of this segment is. Mad Men Mondays. All right. Okay. <coughs> you're the most stubborn of the races, of the gender. You're you're less inclined to, to act fast. You're, depending on who you are, you're less inclined to listen to take on advice, and you're less inclined to spend money on a whim on on self development. Unless you're in a different level of thinking. Now to get into that different level of thinking. You'll have to put your ego to the side. You'll have to take a quick self-assessment and you'll have to ask yourself this question. What do I want? And then from asking yourself that question, you'll see whether or not what you're currently doing, if it's helping you to get what you want or it's not. Drop what's not helping. Continue what is helping. Add on with that more specific things that will actually help you. Fitness, mental game, what's your thought process? What's your Where's your, your self-talk at? Up, down, neutral? Are you helping others or not? Other people like the way that you do what you do, or are they hating on you? You want that quick self-check, right? And then you want to add on. Now, I am telling this to anyone who's listening. I don't really mind if you think I'm a quack, or you think I'm underqualified, or you think I don't know what I'm talking about. Every single person on earth has the ability to be somewhat complacent. And so if this is for anyone and everyone who just wants a little reminder that they can do more if they choose for it. They can earn a little bit more money. They can have, or they can earn a lot more money actually. They can be more happy. They can be more fulfilled. They can live in an area that they really want to. They can provide for their family. Whatever it is that they want to provide is going to happen overnight. Some things, yes, like the decision making process can happen instantly. You can get off this this video right now and go kick ass. You can get off this video right now and you can go 
do whatever it is that you want to do, or you can procrastinate. Which situation do you like better? Current one or the future one? The one that sounds a bit more fantastic. Understand that this is not an overnight process. It is a lifelong process in some areas. It is an overnight process with some small things which you can't action immediately. So what I advise you to do, once again, take a look, snapshot, where am I at in my life? The self-check, the point A. Drop the things that aren't helping me get where my goals, my goals lie. What are my goals as well? What do I want? How do I get it? Drop the things that aren't helping, keep doing the things that are, make them a daily priority. I use a, I use a journal, so I write in a book, a journal every day, and I do a daily checklist. And I'm slowly increasing the number of things that are on that list, depending on what they are. And I'm having a great time dropping some of the stuff that I used to do that I used to really hang on to and it used to really drag me down. I'm so lucky and privileged for the ability to self-check and drop stuff, let go of stuff, and to add new stuff in. And that there is one of the most liberating features of my mindset that I can, that I can report on. And I want that for you guys as soon as we can. So if you've got questions, comment down below, like, share this post if you think it was relevant for other people to know. And until we speak tomorrow, believe in you. And thank you very much.